Hello, my name is Tom Wolf, and I'm the chair of the Interfaith Conference of Metropolitan Washington's Center for Nurturing Understanding. And I'll be talking to you today about how we set up a booth to teach about religion and try and create enthusiasm with different uh, levels of social studies educators, administrators, and um, directors of their uh, trade organizations about teaching about religion in the public school system. So today I'm going to talk about how we set up the booth for the Interfaith Conference. We have a really neat booth, how we set it up. I'm going to talk about also about how we use a thing called one-to-one -one marketing, which is to, it's called editing your group of people that you serve. So first you examine the group of people that you already have who are interested in what you do, and then you differentiate those people as to their level of interest in your service and product. And then you identify by talking to them mostly what you could do to serve their needs better. And then you tailor your service to their needs. So that's why it's called EDIT, E-D-I-T. But first, let's talk about the booth itself. We have been very graced by a man named Prasad Kadambi, who was able to get us an incredible banner with all the symbols of the 11 faith communities to set up behind the booth. And that really works well, where the teachers come up to the booth. And our primary audience is social studies teachers and administrators. So when they come up to the booth, they are really captivated by this, I believe it's three feet by seven feet banner with all the symbols of the world religions. And that also matches up. The products that we have for the social studies teachers and administrators are a book in which the 11 religions answer the same 42 questions, and then three supplements, one on the symbols of the world religions, in which, the, again, the religions describe their own symbols, and also the values of each faith community. And again, they share their own values. They, each community writes their own version of their values. And then we just finished one on the environment, what each faith community uh, teaches their community and you know, hopes to accomplish in the world about preserving the environment. So when the teachers come up, they see this banner that has the symbols, and that leads right into the conversation of how can we serve you better by showing them the supplement that uh, teaches children about the different symbols of the world religions. I think it's also important to have a banner, and we do so, uh, for the organization. So we have two banners. One is really bright and full of color and says, you know, come talk to us about these interesting symbols, which happens. But then the other one, which we generally drape on front of the table, just says the Interfaith Conference of Metropolitan Washington, the address and the website, and a way to contact us. Okay, then it's important to put whatever it is you want to get across in good order on the table itself. And there's a big debate, my dad used to do this as a living, whether you stand in front of the table or behind the table, and I'd say it's just whatever you're most comfortable with. But on the table itself, whether you're standing in front of it or behind it, you want there to be a really nice display of whatever it is you're trying to get across. So what we do is we actually put the main book up on a uh, thing we got from the Amish that's designed to hold a Bible, and we open it up, the main book. And that's really... Um, it sets it off as special, because it actually is scripture. And so it sets it off as special. And then we do, we try and work really hard to get flyers that are informative and on attractive colored pieces of paper and stuff like that, that really, you know, catch people's eye. It's also important to have a sign-up sheet, particularly in the, these days of email, that the easiest way to differentiate your consumer, or your teacher in this case, is to sign them up for emails by their level of interest. So we have now signed up about, I would say, 300 social studies teachers who are very interested in Maryland, 300 teachers in Maryland who are interested in following the now five states that teach religion in the public school system.
So, and with that sign-up sheet, you want to make sure that you don't just put down their email. What you want to do is have a conversation that's really personal with the teacher in this case, or the customer, whatever it is you're trying to get across, and make sure you differentiate. How much email do they want to get? How interested are they in your service? You know, are they administrator? Do they have a past experience of being devoted or enthusiastic about your service? So in our case, we have uh, differentiated into four levels. We have the highest level is an ambassador. We have about 30 of those at this point. And that would be somebody who's really shown by their actions in the past or their teaching ability that they're devoted, is the word, to teaching about religion in the public school system. Or they've you know, worked on the political aspects of it or the First Amendment issues. So those are the ambassadors. Those are people that you're going to really spend a good amount of resources to contact, stay in touch with and really nurture your relationships. Those are your ambassadors, the people who take your message out to the world. Then the next level down is what we call the highest teachers, the highest educators, and those are people who are actively writing lesson plans in their school district, but perhaps aren't really motivated to contact other people. But still, we want to stay in touch with those folks. To, to In our case, we've decided that the next uh, service that we can really provide is to make lesson plans really easily available for the social studies teachers and administrators so they don't have to do much to easily teach about religion different topics. So the ease and the sort of finished lesson plan is what we're seeking. So anybody who finishes a lesson plan on teaching about religion becomes the highest customer. Then you have your higher customers who are really interested and have some things differentiated them, then you have your just sort of uh, interested people. So, but with email, you know, there's really no cost much except the time you put into the piece itself. So, with the differentiation, you can really be effective in staying in touch and in, in uh, you know constant contact. There's actually a piece of software named that with the people who really want to hear what you have to say. So you've differentiated, and we also differentiate by grade level. And the thing you want to capture is what on the email list where you sign the folks up is what's your next deeper contact? What takes the teacher in this case deeper into your educational product line and how you design your next contact to make that happen? And again, you want to think in terms of their needs. And that's the I and the edit. So you examine, you differentiate, and you identify what the needs are that you serve so that you can better serve them. And the best thing you can do there is be very direct and say to the, in this case, the teacher, what can we do to serve your needs as a social studies teacher in the sixth grade, seventh grade, you know, all the way up through twelfth grade. That's so far just the level of educators we've been working with. What can we do to better serve your ability to get across to these students, you know, a fair, balanced teaching about religion in the public school classroom? And then the final thing you want to do is listen well to what they say you can do. And overwhelmingly, what we've been hearing is what you can do is make easily presented and things we don't have to, lesson plans, we don't have to do anything, just hand them. So we can just take them and put them into action. And we can always tailor them. That's what you can do. So then we start to tailor how can we use our resources to make that happen. And... Uh, that's another conversation, how the Interfaith Conference is doing that to meet the needs of the social studies teacher. And then in this case, you want to tailor, we, have, we need to tailor our needs to the social studies teacher to make sure that we stay within First Amendment boundaries. There are uh, pretty clear boundaries about what you can and cannot do in the public school classroom. And basically, the, the key thing is to teach about religion and not try and promote any particular religious outlook. So, in conclusion, basically, what we're doing now to tailor our services to the needs that we've heard from the, overwhelmingly, from the social studies teachers is both on the state level in Maryland and soon in the National Council of Social Studies meets in D.C. on December 2nd through the 4th, is we're just looking to find out what already exists uh, that social studies teachers are using to teach about religion. And then we're going to tailor that to 
develop it to use our products and uh, our supplements to um, better serve the needs of the social studies teacher in the classroom. So that's how we set up our booth and it's been working really well. We have the backing of the National Council of Social Studies teachers to do a poster session in December and we're really excited that we're really making that process work and we're connecting with the teachers and developing a bank of uh, lesson plans that everybody can use to feel safe and effective in teaching about religion in uh, the public schools and, you know, God willing, later in the private schools and religious schools too. So if you have any questions, you can contact the Interfaith Conference of Metropolitan Washington. This is the Teaching About Religion Project.